Now we actually have a graphic here, and if you can explain to us <clears throat> what we're looking at, and especially based on the information that you just shared <clears throat> with us, we see we have the uh, uh, placenta here. What are we looking at? So this is the um, cervix, and then the placenta mm -hmm. is covering the entire cervix. So in this case, this appears to be a, a complete placenta previa. Okay. If the placenta was moved only covering a portion of the cervix, then we would be calling that a marginal or a, a partial preview. Mm -hmm. Now, based on this photograph, um, Dr. Feldman, the placenta should, where should the placenta normally lie? So normally the placenta will um, lie around where the baby's back is, maybe where the baby's butt is, maybe up where the feet is. So okay. the placenta can be lie in the mid portion of the uterus or at the top of the uterus, which is called the fundus. Mm -hmm. Now in a case like this, we're looking at a C-section, correct? This would be correct. Yep. Okay. Now, and is it true that placenta previa is more common in women who had one or more of, of placentas previa in the past, or pregnancies, apologies, in the past? Actually, where we probably see it the most commonly is when people who have had primary cesarean sections or previous cesarean sections. So that's mm -hmm. probably the biggest risk factor for placenta previa. Or they've had other uterine in, um, instrumentation, whether that's a myomectomy, whether that's um, mm -hmm. previous surgery on the uterus. Right. So, and, and often we will see it in twins and triplets which we were explaining before, it's because they share that blood flow. Is that true? Correct. Okay. Now, I, I want to go back, uh, focus on some of these factors a little bit. Uh, usually, when, when, a, when a woman has her first pregnancy and she has a C-section, let me reaffirm, higher chance of developing placenta previa. In subsequent pregnancies.